Hello, my marvellous sausages. I really recommend that you get the Xenophage exotic machine gun. It's absolutely devastating. You'd be one-shotting gits in Gambit, no problem at all. Invaders, I mean. It's an amazing boss melter. It's solar, which is fantastic for this season as well. And the machine guns have had a buff. And this Xenophage, in particular, has been returned to its pre-nerf state. So now it's doing a lot more damage. It's firing a lot faster. And it really is something that you need to have in your arsenal in 2022. So, this is a complete guide on how to get the Xenophage from start to finish. Play this through and I can guarantee you, you'll have it at the end. I'm also doing this solo, just so you can see that it can be done. But of course, a fire team would help you in certain parts. But this is a solo guide. Now you're going to need access to the Shadow Keep expansion in order to get Xenophage and also progress the story so you have access to the Pit of Heresy dungeon on the moon. Right, in order to get step one of the Xenophage quest started, we need to go to Soros Harbour here to the landing zone and we're going to be making our way up to the Scarlet Keep there. So we need to get a nice sparrow and wend our merry way up the steps and up through the main door. Uh, this way, you know, one way is going to the uh, Pit of Heresy, which is straight on. The other one is going to the right, which takes you over to the Strike there, the Scarlet Keep. And this one to the left takes us to the Pyramid. So here we are. Let's just jump off here and just jump up and uh, make our way round here into the left-hand doorway and then make our way down. Now, there's a um, it's kind of a hidden route, really, because uh, you can get there through the teleport, like I mentioned with Eris, but there's also like a nice, quick, sneaky way to get here, too, although it's completely legit. That's not a dodgy way at all. It's in the opening, so here we are in the Enduring Abyss. Now, then, if you get to this lantern and then go just a little bit further past it, and you can see up to your right here, look, it's a turd, uh, a little entryway. So you want to go to this entryway, and then here we are in the air, Area where we need to be in order to uh, get the quest started. So, what we need to do here now is ignite these statues in a particular order. So let's have a look at the order here. What we need to do is uh, do the front right statue first, which is this one over here, and it'll say uh, emerge from the dark. So there we go. There's one statue done there, and the other, some of them will light. And then we need to go to the back left statue. It's already lit, but we're trying to get them all lit at the same time. So this is the back left. We've done that one then, yes. And then we want to go to the back right statue, which is this one over here. And then finally to the front left statue, this one here. And there we go. It says, you have emerged from the dark. Claim your path. And then you go to the chest and then you start the journey uh, secret mission. There we go. The journey new quest step. Around you darkness, if you discover your path, you must anchor yourself to the light. And this way we go on to step two. Right, so we've got our quest step to get the Xenophage. Step one of six, around you darkness, if you discover your path, you must anchor yourself to the light. So we find ourselves here in a place called the Anchor of Light here on the moon. Let me show you exactly where I am on the map. Look, here I am. So there's Sanctuary. You want to go off to your right and then just come around here to the Anchor of Light and make your way down to this orange building in the far corner. So you can see we're opposite the cave here. We've got that blue awning over there, and we've got that big main structure here. Well, down here to the left, it's a small orangey building. And then what we're going to be doing to get this part of the quest done is we're picking up this little bollock of light, and we're sticking it in various of these uh, weirdy-looking trays that are spread all around just this area of the Anchor of Light. Now, once you pick it up, you've got 50 seconds to drop it into a tray, and then it resets it until you go on to the next one. So let me show you exactly where they are. I've done a practice run, so hopefully we should do this. So let's pick up the light. There we go. And uh, we'll pop it in the first tray here. Light your path. Boom. Right. Torchbearer. We've got 58 seconds. And we're making our way out the door here. Careful not to fall down any gaps or get killed by any bum pipes on the way. We're making our way to the far corner over here. So just run up over the humpy hill bit and then bend round here to your left. And it's tucked away here just on the top. Look, there's the next plate. Light your path. Stick it in there. Now we've reset back to 57 seconds. And we're going not over to that hexagon. I just didn't want to die. We're going over to that orange building here. Look at those bum pipes shooting him in there. Well, we're going in here. And there is a uh, plate. Just look. Can you see it lurking? They're all hidden away. Light your path. Here we go. 
that's the next plate. Then we're back up to 57 seconds. We're going to run out here, ignoring all the idiots. Now we're jumping out onto the big structure in front of us here. And we're making our way up to the top. So up we go again. And oh, we just didn't bloody make it that time, did we? That's annoying. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. There we go. And we want to jump down inside here. Look. And there we go. You can see another plate there. Stick it in there. Two more to go. Drop down the hole. And we want to make our way out here to the right. And then we're jumping off. This one's easy to find. It's right out in the open. Look, gesture on this platform. Stick it in there. Here we go. Your path is brighter. And finally, this one's pretty easy to find. It's on top of the hexagonal doodad there, look. So we've just uh, run over to the hexagonal doodad. I bloody love that sparrow. I haven't got one of those. Uh, let's go up here to here. And then we're going to find the plate on the top. Stick it in. Bob is your uncle, as they say. You can see we've still got the torchbearer buff, but no timer on it. Because what we've got to do now is just ma wander <laughs> wander back, back over to that marker and we shall find ourselves on the next step of the uh, Xenophage mission let's plop it in here, there we go, stick it in the hole there we go we've got the next step of the journey a light shines on your path but you have yet to bring it into focus until then your path remains among the lost so here we are on to step two of six we've got to go to each one of the lost sectors on the moon and solve a puzzle at the end and that will give you a fragment so we can get on to the next step so as we're actually in the anchor of light where we just finished our running around sticking the balls on plates i'm going to make a start here in k1 communion so what you basically need to do is come to k1 communion and then just fight your way through to the end after the uh, chest has been opened that's when you'll see this little wall puzzle that we have to complete here we are in the uh, k1 communion baby and what we're looking for is right at the top of the stairs here as we come out there it is look now all we've got to do is shoot these in a certain order to do it now these should work we have occasional reports of that not working for people but let's see how we go first of all so what we've got to do is the bottom left one here another tip as well don't use anything with explosive payload or explosive anything because you're going to set off some of the other buttons and it won't work so single shot really or just make sure there's no explosives involved yes so bottom left here there we go and then that's gone all a bit funny and changed then we're going to go to bottom right there we are it's changed that one as well then we're going to go to center top yes and then we're going to go to center top again and that should do it for us excellent there we go there is everything that we need the chests opened up and we've got our first fragment now, of course, you can do them in any order that you see fit, but I'm moving on here to K1 Logistics in Archer's Line. So I'm just going to fight my way through to the end of this, baby. So there we go. We've cleared out the gits, opened the chest, claimed you're absolutely sawed all, and now we're looking for the next puzzle. Where is it? There it is on the wall just as we leave. So same thing again. We've got to shoot some babies in order. So first of all, we're looking for the top left one here. There we go. And then we're going to go for bottom left down here. And then we're going to go for center right, which is over here. Center right, sorry, that's center right. Beg your pardon. And then finally we want to go for center. And we should see that that works lovely. There we go, excellent. Fragment two done. Right, next we're going to make our way to the Hellmouth to K1 Crew Quarters. These are always a bit of a, a trek to get to, so I'll see you at the end for the puzzle. So here we are with the uh, chest, and we can see then... Oh, hello! We can see here now we've got our little wall of puzzles to go over here. Now, this one is quite a long one, so we need to pay attention to what we do. Don't forget as well, if you do cock it up, you can either try and get back to where you left off from, but the best thing to do, to be honest, is just run the Lost Sector again, because it resets the puzzle then okay so leave and come back in and do it again so what we're looking for is top right so there's the right top right okay that's good and then we want the center on the left which is over there that's good yes and then we want the center center yes there we go that's that one there and then we want the bottom center which is that one here and then we want bottom right twice one two and then we want bottom center. And again. 
There we go, it's worked that time. That was very strange. It didn't work for me the first time, but it bloody worked that time. It's excellent. And don't feel that you need to complete the lost sectors if you don't want to. I, after I got past the force field, I just ran all the way through to this bit here. Great, let's get fragment number three and go to the last one in um, Sorrows Harbour. So this one's called K1 Revelation. Here I am just outside the entrance. I shall see you at the end. Now for this lost sector, you have got to make sure you kill every single bugger otherwise the door won't open but there we go now the door has opened and here's our final puzzle so let's make sure we shoot this one correctly on k1 revelation so we've got to go for the center right which is this one over here there's center right and then center left which is this one over here and then we're going for the center twice so once twice and then we're going for center left which is this one over here and then we're going to go for center top, which is this one over here. And then center bottom. And then finally, we're going to go for the center. And this should change them all to the same symbol. Yes, there we go. Fragment collected. Bloody marvelous. And that's that step done. Now, for the next step, we're going to finish it all off in the pit of heresies. You need to have unlocked that before you can get to this step. So let's get on in and I'll show you exactly where you need to get to. So once you traverse your way into the Pit of Heresy, the first place you're going to come to is the Necropolis. Now you just have to get past this in order to continue the Xenophage quest. So some quick tips on how to do it. You need to break three seals in the Necropolis in order to progress. But you've got to be careful as you can die and it'll restart the whole thing for you. So you don't want to die when you're doing this. It can be quite frustrating. Believe me, it took me three attempts to do it. So just bear that in mind. Mind. So after you drop into the first tower, you notice a knight called a pit keeper. Now you need to kill them to open the door into the first chamber. You'll have to kill pit keepers when you visit each individual symbol. I'll tell you what I mean now. So once you get in there, you'll see a hive knight with a yellow bar and a massive sword. So kill him. They're pretty easy to kill, to be perfectly honest. And you'll be using this sword all the time, or, or at least until its ammo runs out. Now if you do run out of ammo, you can always come back to this room to where this knight is and kill him to get another one. But you can also also find these knight bearing sword bearing knights no yes knight bearing swords no sword bearing knights <laughs> on the platforms in between the towers yeah anyway you can kill them and you can get a new sword that way anyway on the wall in this room you'll notice there are three symbols and each of these symbols has to be visited and an enemy in the room killed in order to break that seal. Now there's no set order in which you need to do these, just memorise the ones that you need, pop outside, have a little look and then make your way to each one. Just be careful not to fall to your death and watch out for the bloody ogres shooting you up the arse. It's best to take them out, just be methodical, don't have to kill everything, but the big boys take them out. Now then, like I said, there's no set order to do it, but you'll always face the same three enemies. Now there's a knight with a shield, you'll be using your sword, the one you've nicked, to kill them, but you can only kill them with super blows or with light attacks, nothing else. And you've got to get behind his shield as well, so when he's, when he's got his ass hanging out, just slam him in his ass, jump around, kill him, he's pretty easy, to be perfectly honest, he's probably one of the easiest of the three. The next is a wizard. Now, this wizard uh, has a large yellow bar, of course, but it's also got a little entourage of smaller solar wizards. My recommendation, take the solar wizards out first of all, make sure you've got some sort of solar weapon to blast their shields away, and then you can kill the wizard with the sword. Yes, you need to use the sword again, but you don't have to get up close and personal. The heavy attack on the sword is a projectile, so you can fling the projectile at the wizard, and it usually takes about seven or eight hits, something like that, in order to to kill it. The final one is a shrieker. Now it does sound a bit stressy but it's actually not that hard at all. Make sure you've got a sword with enough ammo in it. Now in the room with the shrieker there's two other ogres. Kill the ogres first because they're a huge pain in the ass. Kill them first and then all you're left is with the shrieker. Now all you've got to do is block with the sword, put the crosshairs when you're blocking with the sword on the centre of the shrieker and the purple eye bolts that it shoots at you will be reflected back at the shrieker and it'll kill it pretty damn quick. Once that's done, 
pop out and have a little look around, you'll see there's a big light beam shooting out of the floor. Jump down to the light beam, kill the pit keepers that's there. Careful not to be killed by all the swarming gits as well. And that will open the door for you to walk into the next part where we're going to get to the next stage of the Xenophage quest. Don't forget to pick up your chest of goodies on the way past. Right, so here we are. We want to get across to these babies over here, but some things pop out here and kill you. So you're going to have to be a little bit careful. So what we'll try and do is go across over to that one there and then up here and over to that one there, which is where we need to go. So then let's uh, just jump back over here like this. Yes, there we go. And then we'll jump onto the uh, main one here. There's one. Two. Three, and then jump over and we should be here this one here is where we need to be there we go and we can see the reveal paths end press that and we're a little bit closer the next step now we need to go down into the bloody total plate nightmare place called the tunnels of despair but we don't need to complete this section what we need to do is just make sure that uh, we stay alive and take an orb and stick it in a couple of trays but let me show you exactly where we need to go so we need to jump back down to the uh, starting area over here and then you'll see there's like a little glowy slit in the wall somewhere let's just pop around there we are that's the way to go down there this is actually the way you go through the mission but we keep on going down this way and then through the slit here and make our way down to the tunnels of despair right so here we are just being dropped down into the pit i've had to try this one a few times but it's a bit tricky but once you know the route it's very simple so first of all we're going to bend round to the left here and we're going to go and collect our uh, little orby sparky thing oh Bernard bum pipe starts charging at us here but don't worry just leap off and sort of glide in he can't get you once you're hiding down at the bottom here and then once we come down undercover nicely undercover here you can see there's a set of uh, writings on the floor reveal the path and we get some floaty platforms coming up look here they come hello floaty platforms now then we need to jump across over to that end platform over there and then we need to pick up that orb of uh, orb of bollock over there look uh careful you don't uh, get killed by the ass on the way because he will shoot you and it can be very annoying so now there's a little route underneath here where you can avoid all these ass pipes so we can just duck and run and we're going basically across underneath the entire entryway there will be thrall and idiots drum drumping jumping down here but don't worry about them we're just going to run on through here and down here they're going to come out this side first uh, and then we're going to sneak across. Hopefully we'll be able to avoid the arse pipe here. We'll go across. Come on, quick. There we go. Let's go in here. I want to across this way, up over the top here. Here we go, and out this side. Now, down this way here is where we need to be to stick our light in. So let's have a look. It's not there. It's not there. It's not telling us to do it there. Oh, great. Here's Arnold Arse Pipe. He has seen me, but that's okay. We'll just duck out of the way here. So let's just wait here. Wait for the little shit bag to sod off the other way. It can be pretty frightening, this bit, but it's quite good fun as well. Let's run back down here. Hopefully. Oh, he's going to kill us. There we go. Never mind, eh? Shit and piss. Oh, we might be doing all right here. No, we're not here. We're going to keep on going around until we make it. Now we can see, look, there is the... Uh, so we stick it in here. One, stick it in here. Two, before he kills us. And we've done it and opened the door and we got the new step. The end of your path is in sight. So that was the worst way to have that done, possibly. But we did it. So run through the door really quickly so the ogre doesn't shoot you up the arse. You'll see loads of thrall at the end of the hall. Just kill them and we're going into the final fight. Once you kill this wizard, all you've got to do is go and see Eris to collect your prize. Now, there is a mechanic to this fight. You can only damage the wizard with certain elemental types at certain times. And the damage that you can actually do is indicated in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. So you can see here it says neutral density. Neutral density means I can do kinetic damage. If it's thunderous, it's obviously arc. If it's fiery, it's solar. And if it's abyssal, it's void. 
Now, each of these elements has a symbol attached to it that you can see in the room before you go into the main wizard room. And you can see each of the symbols there in the corner, so there's a different one for each element. So you have to go into the main room, grab the orb from the centre, Whatever it says then in your bottom left hand corner, say for example it says neutral density, you've got to go and find the symbol that matches neutral density, slam the orb in that little plate, and then you've got 25 seconds to damage them with that damage type, in which in this case it's kinetic energy because it's neutral density. So if you're doing it for uh, thunderous, then you've got to have arc, and if you're doing it for fiery, it's solar. Now the plates for the four elements are spread around the boss room. There's the Abyssal Dread, which is for Void. This is on the top level in the back left-hand corner as you're coming in. The Neutral Dread, which is your Kinetic, that's the top level in the front right corner. And then you've got Thunderous Dread, that's on the bottom level, drop down to do that one, that's in the front left corner. And then finally the Fiery Dread is on the bottom level again, and that's in the back right corner. So all I've made sure was that I had the complete spread of elemental damage available to me on my uh, Guardian at the time, because I was doing it solo. So I just went with three different fusion rifles, an Arc and a Solar and a Void one. I went for my Well of Radiance, slammed that down and emptied it into the git, and eventually killed them. It did take a few times to do it. It, though but be careful if you do die you get back out into the tunnels with the ogres again but you don't have to reopen the door just run up the corridor to the right and go back in and then you can carry on from there phew so there we go that's the end of that scrap last step is to come and see eris sheer on the moon she'll have a bit of a chin wag with us there we go she has a chat with you and there is your xenophage hooray so it's a little bit of a quest, that one, isn't it? But it's certainly something that's doable solo. I've done it solo anyway on my Warlock, uh, and I'm power 1572, so you've just got to think about the certain encounters and how you're going to beat them. Well, there we go. I hope you found that guide useful. You've got your lovely Xenophage, and now you can go killing people in Gambit and dispatch bosses with a mere little glance. Thank you so much for watching, and I shall speak to you all again very soon. Sausage. Ute.